This episode of TechZilla is brought to you by Jack Threads. Time to get HD Nation on. Tony writes in, I've been considering upgrading to a larger 40 or 46 inch LCD TV. No need to have increased hertz or LED backlighting. The display itself with a tuner and a remote will do, but if they have extras at no extra cost, then they are okay to have. Since I'm craving a larger screen, I'm tempted to go the projector route. I know that I need to throw in speakers, but do I really need a pull down screen? How expensive can it get to get a comparable experience as with a TV? What different sets of considerations are there? I think the projector bulb has a shorter lifespan. How often do they go besides the claim life from the manufacturer. Are repairs expensive? Overall, which one is better? Tony. Terrific questions. Yeah, well, first of all, you should have an external set of 5.1 surround sound speakers for any television. I think for so. For any projector. It's the, the, the let go of the screens in the TV. Get a real set of screens, number one. Audio, audio is speakers. Uh, audio is more than half the experience, I yeah. believe. Screen selection, though, is really up to you. Uh, if budget's really the concern, start with a blank wall. Flat white paint is Been relatively there. cheap. Uh, there are also companies like Goo Systems, which will <laughs> actually provide uh, a paint that's specially designed for projection. It actually includes some, either you can make it a little more gray for a little darker, or, uh, or a little more white for good reflectivity. Either way, a good projector screen, though, is going to help the projector itself uh, right. fine-tune the image it produces to the room that you're viewing it in. Uh, most screens feature a nice black matte border around them if you buy a screen that's pre-made. Mm -hmm. That border, that black matte border, actually helps hide edge distortions. Right. And if it's present, too, that black border makes the picture pop a little bit more. It, it will actually appear more contrasted than if it didn't have that black border. And when you're comparing projectors to televisions, you got to think size. Yeah. 90 or 100 inch 1080p picture with an entry level projector is a fraction of the cost of what an 80 or 90 inch LCD or plasma is going to cost you. Yeah, I mean, to put it into context, you know, a 52 inch uh, LCD plasma, $1,500. $2,000 for a nice a one. A very nice a one. A very nice one, right? A 100 inch projector, sub $1,000. I picked mine up for $700. It was like a refurbished unit. It was on totally. the uh, Woots deal time. But I also have an entire wall covered with movie. You know, it over is 100 inches? Awesome. 100, 100 inch screen? inches. Yeah. Exactly. But now, you're talking about longevity of the projectors. Well, there's really only one part that goes, and it's the lamp module. Right. And unless you have a fancy LED lit projector, <laughs> you better invest in a second lamp module to keep it on hand at all right. times, because I guarantee you that lamp module will fail at the moment you will need it most. Uh, true story, <laughs> my friend's first, first day of the NFL football season here in the United States, the first day, he, before the darn kickoff even started, the projector, he heard a pop sound, and he was like, uh, do you think the lamp module blew? Yes, the lamp module blew, and he didn't mm -hmm. have a spare, and he spent the day pretty much miserable. Other than the lamp module, though, there really isn't much maintenance. Yeah. Uh, mine's been running for two and a half years. You should get literally 3,000 to 5,000 hours out of the lamp module. It heat's the killer. Got to keep it dust free. Mm -hmm. Excessive heat's going to basically age everything quicker. So the more air you keep flowing through it, the better right. it's going to operate. Other than that, uh, is if you have light control in the room and you don't have to worry about producing some insanely bright projection picture, uh, if you have a little bit of light control and the room to do it, it's a cheap way to get a big screen and uh, the, the viewing yeah. experience is on par with any other technology out there. If you have a wall of glass and no curtains, the projector is going to be a problem <laughs> unless you are made of money. If you can put <laughs> curtains up, you're going to love the projector. Definitely. Last episode, we took Mike's comments about Thunderbolt. Today, we take his second question. He wrote in, what are the possibilities of taking four 60-inch HDTVs of your choice and mounting them in a grid pattern and running HD video to them as one large screen? 120-degree diagonal, is that right? Using something like one of those Thunderbolt breakout boxes or some other products. Ooh. Mike in Polesboro, Washington. Polesboro. Polesboro? 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 I didn't. Polesboro. I missed it. Sorry, Washington. <laughs> I sense the email coming. <laughs> we will know shortly <laughs> in three, two. Yeah. <laughs> there are uh, PC people uh, right now, especially gamers, are doing this very thing right now. Maybe not with 60 inch screens, right. but with 1080, uh, 1080p displays nonetheless. Uh, AMD has been leading the charge on this for a long time with their Ifinity technology. This allows you on their special graphics cards, or graphics cards that are so equipped, you can connect multiple displays and tile them out to enjoy your favorite gaming content. And the good folks over at Hard OCP actually love to feature the systems that users put together to do these very things. And here are a couple of examples of multiple displays being used on a single system. And you can- the Vertical ones are so awesome. You can do quite cool stuff with this. Uh, also, uh, 
I really don't, there are some commercial products available that will let you do video distribution to multiple displays and do this kind of tiling effect, but they tend to be pretty expensive. Right. And this is something that PC users using standard graphics cards uh, with their home theater setups can do today. And mm -hmm. I'm curious though, if anybody's doing this though with higher end hardware, or how they're splitting that video out to yeah. multiple displays. There's a couple issues here you probably want to think about. One is that you'll notice those, all those hard OCPs, there were three monitors, and they were displayed vertically to maximize the horizontal resolution. Um, to do four monitors, is in, mo in most cases, is actually going to require a second card. And if you do four 60-inch monitors, your 120, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the pixel size the, when I say pixel size, but like sort of the interpreted pixel oh, size is going to look like, like 5,000 by 2,000. You can yeah. get 4K resolution on something like this if you really want to. And the power is there to do gaming at that level. Mm -hmm. And they have certain graphics cards, usually using DisplayPort, because, because you have so many outputs coming out, you need right. a small output to handle if you're going to do this all on one graphics card. So typically right. it's DisplayPort outputs to DisplayPort monitors. So that can be converted to HDMI at 1080p. So there's some, there's some flexibility there in terms of the setup. I gotta say, if you really want a 120 inch screen, spend half as much money, because four 16 inch HDTVs is a lot of money. Oh, yeah. For a lot less money, you can buy an amazing projector, an amazing screen, or paint your wall, and not have the big giant crosshair in the middle of your image, which sure. I, the, the, the big giant plus sign irritates me. One benefit though, even though if you have the bezels that are so mm -hmm. wide, the thinner bezels will make a better tiled display system. The compensation though that they do within the software to help you minimize so that just because you have a gap there, you're not actually creating or stretching the image. There's lots of cool tweaks right. that they've gone through to help make this look as good as it can if you're dealing with large bezel displays. But Can ideally, you would have very thin displays or very thin bezels on your displays for a setup like this. But still, it's but cool. Still. And people are doing it. And if you're doing yeah. this with pro hardware, let me know. I, I, I'd just be curious to know what hardware you're using. Uh, I know you can do this and on how PCs. much it dropped. Yes. Yes. All right, now it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Dude, we got to talk. The clothes you're wearing, you've been wearing since junior high school, it's time to change. I know shopping's not high on your list of priorities, and hey, that's probably why you're still wearing those same clothes from before Texilla was around. It is time, my friend, to get with the program and outfit yourself at Jack Threads. Why Jack Threads? How about this? Everything on the site is up to 80% off. That means starving students can afford to eat while still looking good. And lest you think it's like hand-me-downs from hell that you'd find at the local thrift shop, uh-uh. They carry some serious brands, Vans, Super, Nixon, Ben Sherman, and quite a few more. Interested? I know you are. That's why we've got a special hookup for you. As a Techzilla fan, you can skip the membership wait list and get instant access to the deals at jackthreads.com slash TEK. What are you waiting for? Check out jackthreads.com slash TEK. You're going to look good when you finally leave the house, and you're going to save big bucks when you do it.